All right, just a couple of quick notes before we get started here this morning. Bullying and harassment are wrong and will not be tolerated on this channel. Don't bully or harass anybody mentioned in this video. Don't bully or harass people in the chat and the comments. Those are a good way to get yourself banned. Also want to note that thoughts, feelings, and opinions expressed on this channel are solely my own thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Nothing more. And lastly, a quick note for Jimmy and his pals. Just a reminder that under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, News reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might be otherwise infringing. All right, let me get all that out of the way. Awesome. Hello, every everyone. Good morning, lovely people of the internets. Tis I, Ophelia Hartwig, a.k.a. Savage Minnow, a.k.a. Red Person. Today, we're going to do a fun video where we're gonna talk about Jimmy's magic underwear. Yay! Um, I did try to dress a little bit the part today. Jimmy and I both love graphic tees, but um, I don't actually have any like button down collared shirts. So I'm wearing actually, um, it's like a hooded vest underneath my t-shirt um, or a, would it be a tank top hoodie for, People in North America, I don't know. I've always just heard it called a hooded vest, but when I said that, I realized that the people who said that were not from the U.S. So maybe it's called something else somewhere else. But yeah, that's that's I got like the the t-shirt and collar look going. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, today, yeah, I already said we're going to be talking about Jimmy's underpants. So, perhaps we should just go ahead and get into it. Because I'm excited. I'm excited. I haven't seen this one yet. I started to watch his one about um, JWs and birthdays, and I got partway through it. I was a little bit cranky that day. And I said, you know what? I should watch these with you guys and do reaction. So, here we are. Talking about Jimmy's underwear. Let's do this. All right, here it is by popular request. We're going to talk about the magic Mormon undies and whether or not I, Jimmy Snow, a former Mormon, ever wore them myself. Probably, Stick right? Around. I'm Mr. Atheist. We'll find Let's out. Let's do this. I got to skip through this because, you know, copyright and stuff. Remember that time you were saying you wanted more Dear Mr. Atheist content? Jimmy remembers, and that's what Jimmy's going to bring to you. Okay, a lot of people have asked for this. It's been brought up a ton of times in the past, and we're doing it right now. We're talking about doing magic it. Mormon undies, and we're going to be talking quite a bit about how they fit into purity culture, because they do big time. And so, today's episode, I thought would be the best one to match with my favorite sponsor, and honestly, because a lot of ex-Mormons... Oh, we're going to skip through the sponsors. Audience, maybe newly ex-Mormons. And this sponsor's great for them, it's probably Adam and Eve, yeah. This is going to be like a long, it was a long sponsorship, huh? So again, adamandeve.com, talking about undies. Now, I'm undies. not wearing it. I'm just kidding. I have done videos before talking about my undies on this channel. Um, let me know if you actually want me to talk about that one again. It was kind of a sociopolitical topic. Um, a little bit going into equal rights territory and the whole harry potter joe rolling debacle um but yeah let me know if you guys want me to talk about that again it was one of my very first videos and um as any of you who have done videos know your first like at least dozen to two dozen videos are just absolute shit and should be disappeared from the internet forever and um that was that was one of those but it's a topic that i would love to talk about so let me know if you guys want to know about me undies i absolutely am uh, but I want to talk about what these are. Now, I will tell you, for the most part, despite the fact that it can be fun, 
I actually don't refer to them as magic Mormon underwear that often because they're just temple garments. It just feels like a joke that you're making at their expense. I'll talk a little bit more. I mean, we make a lot of jokes at their expense, though, right? I mean, I okay. For those of you who are unaware, if you haven't seen videos, previous videos on my channel, um, my wife, who is trans, was raised in a Mormon family, and um, her luckily she got out of it pretty early, and her family kind of slowly kind of distanced themselves a little bit from the Mormon church. They're not, I would say, at least the branch of the church that my wife's family was involved in are not like so apt to shun people like it sounds like jimmy's family was like they won't speak to you if you're ex-mormon or whatever and um i don't doubt that that is the case for a lot of people it just um luckily wasn't the case for my wife but she did have a lot of that um kind of indoctrination growing up and stuff and um she did have temple undergarments but like the dude version, you know, because she's assigned male at birth. So like she had to wear, but I think they're, they're pretty similar from what I understand, but she doesn't really talk about it very much. Um, it wasn't like a great thing growing up, obviously. So we don't talk about it a whole lot. And actually I would say I've learned a lot more about my wife's upbringing from like watching Jimmy's content and hearing him like talk kind of openly about the stuff that they experience and then just kind of like asking my wife like was this the case for you and she's like yeah it was the case for like all mormon kids so um like i said a lot of it was the same some of it was different but um yeah that's kind of my not my background but like my perspective basically in going into this also um former jimmy supporter if you haven't seen my previous content um, I was a monetary supporter of his for quite a while before um, Pumpkin Gate blew open. So um, that's kind of my whole background. But anyway, back to talking about Jimmy's magic undies or his temple garments, as I believe that they are called. More about that later. But what we're actually talking about, Mormons refer to as their Mormon temple garments. And so growing up, I always heard them referred to as garments. And I certainly was aware that my father wore them as he would often. Let me know in the chat. Do you he might cover this, but do you wear undergarments under your temple garments if you wear them? For all of you ex-Mormons. Like in the evening, in the same way a person might just wear a boxers and a t-shirt. He might he say. often was just adorning only his garments or maybe like some sweatpants over them. Uh, and I knew my mother wore them growing up too, though. Isn't that like walking around the house naggy? Maybe not. Maybe it is just like going around like in a, your boxers. As a child still, and a boy being raised in that home, uh, certainly got few. One time when I was over at my wife's family's house, I spent the night. There was like a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, I'm not going to get into all of it, but I had been spending the night. And um, I had like kind of like a long tunic shirt. And then... Um, I wear boxer briefs as as my underwear and like I came out to like get some brekkie or whatever and just like my tunic like my shirt and and boxers and um oh crud I hope they're not messing with the electrical lines they did this the other day and like they just they didn't tell me ahead of time and they just turned off my uh my power oh thank you for the follow um shift aces I believe is that is how that is pronounced um, but yeah, my, my wife was kind of like, I don't know if my mom would be okay with you wearing just a t-shirt and boxers. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, um, but that was just kind of like their level of modesty that they were okay with. I don't know if that was a Mormon thing or if it was just a, their family thing. You were glimpses of that, if that doesn't sound strange. Wait, glimpses uh, of what? Certainly got fewer glimpses of that, if that doesn't sound strange. Oh, his mom walking around in just her garments. A photo okay. of what they look like. We'll go ahead and put that up now. Uh, and I will tell you, they are, I believe, as comfortable as they look. Um, I've never worn them myself. Is that Exmo Lex at the bottom? Um, I don't know if he credits in the comment or in the description, but I think she did a video where she like, her and her husband showed their their temple garments and um if i remember correctly it was hilarious i'll try to remember to link that 
itself, but I have felt the material. They are coarse and they are not. Oh, he hasn't worn them himself. The ones that are made for women. Also, it is a uh, movement going on right now trying to get better options as these do not feel breathable for certain areas and parts to try and put. That's actually like I not that I like agree with like people um, being in really restrictive religions, but like I feel like that's a step in the right direction if they're like letting people, um, you know, opt into like if they have a few options, right, for their temple undergarments. But it sounds like that might be just something that's on the brink and not necessarily a thing that's actually happening. Put everything in a family-friendly way that we can all hopefully trick YouTube into letting stay up and unsuppressed. Um, I know this from my previous video mentioning undergarments. It's, it's, it's going to be manually reviewed. So hi person manually reviewing this on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of you do all that you do. And I'm sorry that you have to like go through this entire thing and listen to us talking about M Mormon temple garments. I'm going to try and say it less so that you don't have to like watch it too much, but, um, thank you. I promise no nudity. So a bunch of the question is going to be pretty much because I'm pretty sure that like Jimmy would have no nudity. But if there is nudity on the Twitch stream, um, A, I'll get banned for that on Twitch and B, I'll, I'll clip it out before I put it on YouTube. Like why do Mormons it, wear There's not going to be any. There's not going to be any. Uh, it is something that you are given. I don't even know why I said that. Mormon endowment ceremony. This is okay. what Mormon temples are for. So you probably are aware already. Maybe you're not. There are churches, but there are temples. The temples are the things big, usually like white marble looking building, might be white granite, uh, has a They're big temple with a Moroni, who's an angel of theirs, oh. a trumpet at the top of it. I didn't realize that's um, what it was. That is where that's different cool. ceremonies happen. That's where they do like baptisms for the dead. And they do these things called endowments. And these endowments are like another set of covenants you take between you and God and there's a lot I could say about them, and I'll probably just do it on a future episode, but you should know. There's like another thing that other Christians do, and I forget, is it like, I want to say like a certification ceremony, but it's not that, like, confirmation? Is that it? Oh, so you get them, and you is it like that? to wear them as your most base layer of clothing for the rest of your life. Oh, okay, the church so no undies underneath. That there are no mythical or magical attributes to the garments. Confirmation or catechism. Okay. Is that sim similar to like their endowment ceremony? And we're going to have to talk about that because while the church says catechism, that, I remember that word statement, <laughs> the way it is reinforced in the culture everywhere, that's not entirely true. But an average Mormon, okay. if you ask them what it's for, they'll probably say something like, it's to serve as a daily reminder of the covenants you made, which it is kind of that too, but for... Isn't that like kind of like the, the brainwashing aspect of it, right? You like put it on your skin and it's like the, the brainwashing reminder every time you like go pee or, you know, anything. For somewhat sinister purposes, if you ask me. In fact, for the sake I mean, of you interested, let's actually talk about that for a little bit here. So growing up in the church, you hear all kinds of stories that are, frankly, magical and mystical about wearing okay. garments. You hear them all the time. And I can tell you, not only did I hear it dozens to hundreds of times, I never once while in the church heard somebody in the church condemn those stories being told. Sorry that you just heard my phone notification go off. So I, for example, heard all kinds of stories. I'm not even kidding. Uh, so you would hear stories like protect wearers from a long fall, like things like fell out of a plane without a parachute. Oh, my gosh. I did not get what he was talking about until just, like when he gave that example. Like, oh, my gosh, they're supposed to like literally physically protect you. That's funny. Stopping bullets. It almost seems like they take those stories about like there was a Bible in the pocket and the bullet got stopped. So they so are they magic garments. Just rebrand them as with garments. Uh, but then some of them are weird stories where you're like, that's not actually a blessing. Because I remember hearing the story about a house burning down. Uh, and there's several versions of this story. I know that there will be, if you're an ex-Mormon, in fact, in you the probably comments, heard it. it's one of those stories. Favorite garment story. People. It's like the fish story. Like. 
Everybody has one. I would love to see them also. So yeah, in the comments, <laughs> leave your favorite. But uh, it was a story about a house burning down and how, yes, the person I like the, or whatever it's the animation be, there. The person inside did die, and and her body was burnt to bits except for where her temple garments were and that was completely protected like like nothing had happened to her it, but like her her head and arms and legs were burnt off that sounds terrible it kind of reminds me of that same bible story of like yeah grandma died in a house fire and everything in the house was completely torched except for the bible she kept in her nightstand it's literally just repurposing of those same stories but sorry if i'm leaning off camera here i my leg is having a spasm, but it's fine. We heard them all Sorry. the time. And there's all types of other stories about, like, you know, missionaries who got stabbed uh, or would have been stabbed, but somehow they couldn't stab them where the garments were. And unfortunately, Spear just my like brother bent. was telling me about this. Sinister stories in reverse where if someone does successfully stab you through garments on your mission, now they can, like, they would take that to try and blame you as being unworthy for the garments and say it was some kind of sin. Again, none of these are because the garments didn't protect you. You must not be worthy. That does sound like some crazy cult shit. Official church policy things, but are rampant through the church, and the church is doing yeah, no it's just the story, making no like, attempt to correct it when those things came up. At least they didn't as long as I was in the church. But then, it's like campfire stories them, and Boy Scouts, though. Once you have been given the garments, that's expected to be your underwear for the rest of your life. They are meant to be worn at all times, except for like when bathing. Uh, I've actually seen. Some Do you get like? I'm assuming you get like lots of pairs of them, right? Some people argue like and talk about ways you can still wear them with a bathing suit. But yeah, it's supposed to take up. Well, there are some of those bathing suits that are like the modest bathing suits who like legit are for people who don't want to like show their shoulders or above their knees. And like, yeah, you could wear it with that or with like a wetsuit or that kind of thing. If you wanted to, there's people who just like want to dress modestly and just want to cover that stuff up. So there are those things out there. Um, again, I'm not like condoning Mormonism. I've. I've yet to to find a a version of Mormonism that uh, seems like actually chill, but um, I'm not saying that they're not out there. That's, <laughs> but but yeah, if if you wanted to, even like people who maybe they they just, I'm a person who I really enjoy wearing an undershirt. You'll notice that pretty much every time. I'm on camera, you'll notice that I'm wearing two shirts, not because of any like religious upbringing or anything. I just like feel more comfortable having like a undershirt and an overshirt. Um, and then, like I said, I, I wear boxer briefs like all the time. Um, so there are people who are just like more comfortable like that. Now, I'm also like, I, I will also wear a string bikini sometimes when I feel like it, but like, that not everybody is like that, you know. So, so no shade to the people who want to wear long ass undergarments under their bathing suit. You're free to wear it however you want, wear whatever you want, wear whatever you feel comfortable in. Up the remainder of your life. That's those are your underwear choices from now on. Obviously, as you saw in the picture, the uh, underwear okay. themselves they are all white. If they opt into that, they look like similar to a lot of other underwear uh there is a tan version only available for people in the military which i guess i don't fully understand because these are i'm wondering if that's because like they get like dirty grimy gross easier and then like like they don't look as dingy when they come out of the wash if they're like tan undergarments so i guess if you need to hide in sand yeah. In your underwear? I don't know. I don't. But anyway, that I doubt is, that has uh, anything to do with color that. exception made. Uh, they do stop just above the knee for both men and women. Uh, there are no variants made for any other gender identity, as the church still largely denies those. It might be a restriction that the military places. Oh, like they have to have tan undergarments for to be in the military. And therefore, the Mormon church has like a military version that's tan. That makes sense. If that's the case, though, so the not just 
they'll have little things where they'll pay like lip service and acknowledging things exist, but then say things or have policies like if you actually do transition in any way, even just socially, you're in violation of our rules on the garments. Wait, side, what is that about? Sorry, I missed that. Was he talking about trans people? The, the not just they'll have little things where they'll pay like women. Uh, there are no variants made for any other gender identity as the okay. church still largely denies the, the, not just, they'll have little things, a gender, like non-binary people, acknowledging things exist, but then say things or have policies. Like if you actually do transition in any way, even just socially, you're in violation of our rules on the garments themselves. Uh, I assume David will put little pictures up here. There are embroidered marks. They are basically interesting. They have Masonic and early like magic witchcrafty kind of vibes to them. Uh, and that's why they are there. However, now the church's official stance ever since like actually 1920 something is that they just represent things. So one, for example, they just represents is an arrow that is pointing upward. It's supposed to symbolize the compass that leads you to eternal life to heaven. Is this like there's also a reverse L basically? Is this like magic undergarments as outer garments this is such a weird picture to me where did this picture come from wait i gotta see if he like actually credits in the comments like or in the description do, 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 do. he doesn't he does not Say where he got this stuff from the one i think was eczema lex but i'm not sure Th but this picture is like so strange to me <laughs> i don't know where it came from where did it come from i want to know basically half of a square um that is apparently supposed to represent exactness in keeping the commandments honoring the commandments precision yeah, because it's exactly 90 degrees. Remember, but these aren't obvious symbols. The compass one was OK, but no, uh, there's a mark. It's like a line. But sometimes when it's represented, sometimes it kind of looks just anyway. There's a mark over the navel. Uh, what was this one? This one represents it doesn't look like they're navels. Maybe it is, but not just for the body. Also, the spirit uh, again. OK, it's Mason stuff. Uh, Joseph Smith stole a ton of stuff from Masonic rituals. And then my favorite and the only one that people Culty. usually remember cool. hand, even though these symbols are supposed to I find this stuff interesting, just line on the knee, which is supposed to represent the verse about every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That's what these symbols are meant to represent. Before they were symbols, they were actually cuts. They were cut out of uh, the earlier temple garments. If David can find it, he'll put up a, a picture of them, of what they used to look like. So like they had little like nip nip cutouts. That's hilarious. Also, this um, definitely looks more comfortable than like the previous iterations, right? Like a whole suit. Oh my gosh, that first one is like a collared everything. It's a little obnoxious. Definitely looks. So I think like the next version is probably just going to be like a tank top and bikini, right? Let's just evolve. It'll continue evolving. Like, or a drawing of what they were supposed to look like. They had much more stuff, like a double knot and things. Yeah, it's the history of these things are interesting. Uh, as I said, I, I want to know more about that. Uh, I, I never did my temple endowments before I left the church. So, uh, also never. Ooh, this is another cool picture. Now, this is of the endowment ceremony, I guess, because they're in all white. Now, are there temple outer garments as well as temple undergarments? Because this is like their whole body is white. Also, they have like this little skirt thing going on, little pleated, almost like a kilt. And even like the guy is wearing like a hat veil type thing. What is what is this outfit? I like this outfit. I want to know more. It's so interesting to me. I don't want to wear it, but it's really interesting. I feel like there's probably like so many symbols in this and we're only just touching the surface. And what is this thing? 
never went on a mission. That's another thing where some people don't think I have real ex-Mormon street cred because of those couple of facts. And I think I would have rather have left sooner than earned that street cred. I will say, yeah, you don't no need street cred. And being it's autistic, fine. I cannot imagine what it is like for autistic people who have that specific material sensitivity. I have to be very careful about which shirts and stuff I put against my skin because I will obsess over and or hate it if I. I imagine, though, that it's like one of those things where, like, once you become accustomed to it, it's fine. Like, I know um, for me, like, there have been things where it's like I had to just become accustomed to it. And now it's just like really normal to me. Um, underwear was one of those things. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, it doesn't like wearing them at all. <laughs> but I did become accustomed to like wearing like bikini bottoms, like normal, you know, girl underwear um and then i did make the switch to like i said boxer briefs but it was like um well i talk about it a little bit in some of my other videos i was much heavier at the time and i was getting um a lot of um like rash between my legs and stuff um and i had a roommate who he had been very heavy before and he was like you need to get you some boxer briefs <laughs> and uh and I kind of never looked back, even though I've lost a lot of weight since then. And I probably wouldn't have like chafing issues anymore. But um, I don't know. I just feel more comfortable in boxer briefs now. I had to get used to the uniform when I joined the army. By the time by the time basic was over, nine weeks normal clothes felt weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am now kind of like that with. Um, bikini bottoms if I like have to wear bikini bottoms for something it's like it's, this feels awkward um my wife is the opposite she um feels awkward wearing like men's underwear and she really only feels comfortable if she's wearing like a bralette or something whereas like I feel kind of awkward when I when I wear a bra you know so it's just like you you get used to it and like you can force yourself to get used to it I think um, for at least for a lot of autistic people, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Jimmy would fall into that category, but again, I don't know him, so maybe it would just be one of those things where he just couldn't deal. But then, how? That's my question. Would be like, how would the Mormon Church deal with that? Would it be like, well, you can't like do your endowment ceremony, or like you can't be like a full member of the church, or like how would that be if he was like? literally could not wear the undergarments what would what would their response be i wonder i don't and i also want to say this and it's a little bit of a hot take if i'm being honest i don't think we should make fun of mormons for wearing this underwear i know that it's weird and i know that it's funny yeah i, mean, I think i it's agree at the stake of the individual we shouldn't do talking about it as a concept cracking jokes about it as that's fine uh I think it's one of those things that you train yourself to not really complain about when you get diagnosed late in life. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. There's a lot of things that I've like trained myself to be like, I just like, I just deal with it or like, I just like check out or, um, whereas if I would have been diagnosed when I was younger, I might've learned better coping skills. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anything that's more down to the individual, we shouldn't do because we should really be understanding that these are people that are victims of ideology and victims of pro. I don't know how the Mormon church does it, but an extended family member of mine is severely autistic in a Southern Baptist church and they just never got treated as an adult. Like they are always given the children's rules. Oh, that sounds really frustrating. <laughs> like they're just treated as a child their entire life. That that sounds ridiculous, but I bet that would be how it would be in the Mormon church. Like if you're not, I don't know. That's just a guess though, that it would be like, if you're not capable of wearing the garments, then you're not capable of being like a full adult or whatever. Yeah, I could see that happening. Programming I'm gonna down back this up a little bit. We shouldn't do because we should really be understanding that these are people that are victims of I agree. ideology. I agree. Victims of I agree, Jimmy programming religious programming and frankly in my humble opinion and by humble i mean i made a four-part series with another creator about why it's true uh so not very humble <laughs> where we are talking about what i believe is a cult and cult programming 
But also, there's other things you should know about. Um, was that the non sequitur show or Telltale that um he talked about? Oh, there was another creator who I think he was raised JW, and I remember like his family was all into essential oils, and I could not think of his name. Let me know in the chat if you guys know who I'm talking about. But he does examine a lot of stuff like on the bite model, and I think that might be who he's talking about. Um, if I think of who it is, I'll link it in the description on YouTube. Anything you do when you are, if you make fun of a Mormon individually. In my notes, I'm just going to write oily boy. In this case or anything else, uh, Mormons are taught that persecution is a sign of. Yes. Right. Yes. Genetically modified skeptic. Yes. Um, I don't know if that is who he's talking about that he did the. Um, several part series with, but I know gen genetically modified skeptic has like looked at several things, um, compared them to the bite model. And I love his work. One thing that I do want to like examine and compare to the bite model, let me know in the comments, um, if it's something that you're interested in, but the one like culty thing that I was, um, involved in for several years, Drew, Drew from a mod genetically modified skeptic. Um, the one culty thing that I was involved in for many years was the 12 step program, um, which if you're not familiar with it by that name, you might be familiar with AANA, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. There's also Overeaters Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous. Um, Al-Anon is for people who may or may not have a family member that is addicted to um, a substance or some type of behavior. Um, and it is really kind of an all encompassing organization where even if you don't have an issue, they will probably try to find an issue that, um, <laughs> will help bring you into the fold. Um, and after being a member for many years, um, and then kind of learning about cult behavior afterwards, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I was in a cult. And I had a friend actually at the time who was like, um, this seems like maybe kind of like unhealthy, like, I'm glad that they're like helping you with this problem, but like, it seems kind of unhealthy. And I was just like, whatever, um, kind of disregarded what they had to say. And then like, now I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, she was right. She was right. At least the group that I was a member of was pretty culty. The VA uses AA as, as one of its recovery programs and their residential programs. I strongly prefer SMART. Um, I was in for a different program. I'm not familiar with SMART, but I am familiar with where I live. They use um, AA and NA as um, part of a recovery program, even for our judicial system, where like if somebody um, is convicted of something and they're given um, a, a conviction that's um, suspended in execution of sentence, where they will like basically delete it from their record. Um, if they go through a, a program, that program is usually um, involves like two meetings a week um, at a 12 step program. So, yeah, um, that's one of the reasons why I find it um, particularly sketchy, like it that. It's it's um, like people are forced into it. It, to me, that really bothers me when like certain government organizations are involved. Um, it just, uh, yeah, so much for separation of church and state. Yeah, because it is very um, not necessarily any particular religion based, but it is like definitely based in um, a higher power. Um, I'll I'll talk about it in another video sometime because um, today we're talking about Jimmy and his underwear. <laughs> But yeah, I I can go on for like so long about it. Um, so I, I I should bookmark that for another video sometime. All right, back to Jimmy. Anything you do when you are, if you make fun of a Mormon individually, in this case or anything else, uh, Mormons are taught that persecution is a sign of being right. Yeah, yeah. And I, again, I think when you're looking at an organization that's like this large of an organization, like there's so many people who have been really like brainwashed by this like sort of cult mentality that you can't look at like any one individual and be like, you're so stupid for being a Mormon, you know, um, it, it, watch X Mel Lex sometimes. She is a really, really, um, intelligent, eloquent speaker. She's like way, way better than I am <laughs> at, at this whole YouTube thing, but she does go into like a lot of, kind of the the mentality that that 
not only um, got her to believe these things, but like kept her there as well. It's really good. Um, definitely going to link her in the description on YouTube for sure. And so are a lot of Christians, but a lot of times they bring up this like, well, you know who else was persecuted? Do you know who else? Jesus. Right. My boy, Jesus Christ. But they also use it to prove to themselves that because they're being persecuted, that means the outside world. Is that means evil. they're right. Mm -hmm. and, and will have an easier time, honestly, dismissing you. So if gross. this is something that you even I agree with them. kind of ingest. Sometimes you'll get a very open person who can be like, you. hey, listen, I get it. It seems funny. Uh, and sometimes you've even, I, I had a family member who, before their mission, didn't really understand until they went on the mission and came back and went, now I get why everybody thinks we're crazy. Because some of the stuff does seem a little bit crazy. But, but at that like point, a passionate approach that, that we but at that point, they're indoctrinated and they're like whole families are members of the church. And like, it's not um, something that like is easy to get out of at that point. Right. Because um, they've put off going to college. Um, they're they're probably going to like plan on going to like BYU, you know. So there's so many things that they would have to like change in their life to really be able to. Um, to like come out as far as if they really do not believe or if they think that some of it is a little bit crazy, weird and too much. Right. Cause they're not like in a position at that point of power, but they are in a position where they are really fully indoctrinated. Remember that like these people believe something for wrong. Oh, he definitely still has great st stage presence. And you'll notice I agree with like, I think 99% of what he's saying. I, I've yet to find something where I, um, that, that comment about like being autistic is, um, I, I feel like it, it, it had merit. Um, so, so yeah, I'm definitely not as frustrated with this as I was watching his, um, video about, um, JW birthdays and how I felt like he was being like manipulative about talking about being in therapy and stuff. I definitely really agree with um with m most everything that he's saying also i like his t-shirt i'm just gonna say it i like the t-shirt reasons and i think being more compassionate might get them to listen and if you're focusing on i want to talk to you about your religion and why i think your underwear is silly that's probably not gonna go very far that said yeah next mormons getting together do enjoy roasting their old mormon selves and the magic underwear and the silly and undies. The misconceptions and things that you could consider a little bit funny about it and the other thing is if you bring it up you're probably going to become one of their church testimony stories where they're like i met this horrible that's true demon possessed atheist who was talking about little and that kind of stuff seriously it's their favorite thing to share stories about in their fast and testimony meetings which is basically like mormon open mic i do love like his his editor I don't have like cool stuff that I can add. Let's see. I can, I can roast Jemmy on fire. That's, that's, I can do that live. I can literally roast you, Jimmy. Um, that's, that's all about all I've got as far as like special effects. Now I do have to hand him that too. It's the first Sunday, at least when I was there, uh, the first Sunday of every month, they do this kind of open mic. Anybody can testify, share the spirit. But as far as is anybody or is it I I thought that I remembered my wife saying that like in her church, you had to like sign up for it and you had to be like somebody who is like worthy of giving testimony. But maybe that's different for every church or maybe I just misunderstood what wifey said. As far as from the church goes, what is the real reason this happens? And we talked about this with coffee. We're back to behavior control. We're also back to thought control and we're back to emotion. Do you guys want you guys want me to talk about coffee next? We can talk about coffee next. Emotion control, all three of those. I do want to talk about the twelve step program though too. One where it's like, eh, kind. Let's of, see how I'm feeling. Like you could make some arguments about like the stories they let the members inside the church consume and believe versus like how they treat the outside world, but it is a control thing. Because the thing you have to realize is because this is the thing it's that's all a control your thing skin all the time, and it is your base layer of clothing, and there are rules about how to have it, hold them and stuff, uh, how to even dispose of them. That's not uncommon though for like a lot of 
like considered like blessed objects and stuff that you can't just like pitch it in the trash. Um, also, like that's kind of how we treat the American flag, right? Excuse me. Like, um, like you're not allowed to like let it touch the ground, and like you're supposed to fold it in a certain way and that sort of thing. Like, I think is that what he's talking about? This is something you have to think about constantly. Don't get me wrong. You're supposed to fold it routine in your drawer. Some Mormon who's like, I don't even think about any of those things anymore. I just do it. But there are a lot yeah. of rules about it, even about like uh, uh, not letting it be the bottom. There's a lot of stuff that are is like that, where it's like it just becomes habit and like you're totally 100% used to it. Um, wifey used to work in um, a, a restaurant where there was like a kitchen and a refrigerator. I'm a vegetarian and I've always, um, my mom was a vegetarian growing up and we've always had the rule that like meat goes on the bottom shelf because of food contamination. Um, and it was like literally a thing that like when wifey and I were living together for six months, I realized like that she always put the meat on the bottom shelf. And I was like, oh, you already do that. And she's like, yeah, I didn't even think about it. You know? Yeah. Flag code. Yeah. There's just like, you don't even think about it. You just like do certain things. If you're used to it, people who are used to handling the flag in a certain way, do it without even thinking about it. It's not like a, oh, I must, you know, preserve whatever. Like once you do it enough, it does just, just become habit. Um, I, I agree with the person who is um, arguing with him that doesn't actually exist, but you know, the, the proverbial person that he's arguing with, that it might just be habit. Like, it's okay. The most thing in your hamper, touching the floor, how you dispose, uh, uh, not letting it be the bottom most thing in your hamper, touching the floor, how you okay, like flag code. Things, how you throw them away. But keep in mind, too, it is your underwear, and it's these things are pretty long and they go to the knee so not only do you have to think about it each day anytime you are thinking about outfits and clothes to wear at the core is going it doesn't mean that like women can't like look at fashionable things that um like i look at like stuff on my wife has been on this kick lately where she is watching like every episode of clever style like ever in existence and there's so many things that I'm like, oh my God, like that's super cute. It wouldn't necessarily be something that I would wear, but it's freaking adorable. And like, I feel like that's kind of like the same kind of habit with like simple undergarments. It's like, if you're used to like not showing anything above your knee, you can still like look at those fashion things and be like, oh, that's cute or whatever without saying like, oh, I would want to wear that, you know? <laughs> Jimmy, you a little bit silly here, in my opinion to be how does this fit in with mine with my clothes like also he says this like from the perspective of like a cis man who let's face it like 90 95 plus percent of men's garments to be okay maybe not like tank tops but typically like men's garments will cover all of the stuff that the temple garments cover anyway so like um I, I would be more like concerned about women, people who wear women's garments. Certain levels of V-necks even aren't acceptable, but obviously the bigger case here being the, the weight and size and how these things hold women's clothing become especially hard okay. to shop for. And something you I'm glad that he mentioned that it's especially women's clothing. I'm glad that he mentioned that because I do feel like sometimes he's like, oh yeah, women. And then like, brushes women off and still just like talks about it because he's like well i'm talking about this from the perspective of a cis man so i'm i'm glad that he mentioned that what you should understand is when you see adult mormon women who look very very much like purity culture picked their wardrobe it's because it did it's because they have to wear things he saved himself barely <laughs> yeah. don't look like they're wearing a diaper or something when they have these garments on didn't they look like pretty like trim like fit into the to the skin right i don't you guys probably can't see down here at the bottom but i thought that they were like pretty now i can't find the the graphic should i should i look it up let's see
Oh, it is hard to get pictures of them. That's kind of funny. But yeah, they do look pretty, pretty fitted here. Let me see if I can show you guys. I do like this. That doesn't show up very big. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. But they do look pretty fitted. And again, they're supposed to always have these garments oh. on. This is purity culture for adults. It's what it is. And they enforce it too because punishments you can get in the church. Yeah, they're not like baggy like boxers. They're, they look pretty tightly fitted. Include being told to no longer wear those garments. You got to go buy some regular underwear until you're little frumpy enough to have the garments again. And when we talk about like the sacredness of it. Oh, okay. Like, so there is kind of like a like shunning where it's like you're not, you need to go buy other underwear. Then, ooh, that would probably be like another thing where it would be like once you're given back your temple undergarments, like are you, do you keep your other underwear? Also, they don't look the most supportive. I'm going to click back into this really quick. I know it's tiny. I'm sorry. Um, but like they're supposed to wear this like the closest layer to their skin, right? So like no bra under, which, whoo, that seems a little bit much to me. But again, personal choice, personal choice. Right. Yes. It's serious behavior control. If people do it by their own choice, then that's one thing. But yeah, when it's like a part of a religion like this, yes, I agree. I agree. It's if they're like, <laughs> especially like the level of like whether or not you're allowed to wear them. Like that just seems uh, culty. Culty is really the first word that comes to mind. <laughs> similar to if you've ever seen big b on the bite model the american flag i'm sure other countries are okay good we have we he brought it up as well fetish in this country so it might be a little bit different it's like that but honestly a little bit worse it's like obviously they think it is much more holy than the flag itself and it is so do they it, it is it don't is they like worship where it's like oh i guess that's just masons in the church that are like where Big on Mormon bishops who are George not, W. Bush or <laughs> George Washington, sorry. For therapy, human sexuality, anything are already allowed to ask teenagers about their sexual habits and lives. And yeah, that's we weird. Have this thing where it's not unreasonable for adults in positions of authority over you to be asking you about your underwear. Yeah, it's just the whole thing is messy. Do they really like ask about it though and bring it up? I, I mean, I don't know. And if you ask me, pretty creepy. And again, meant to be there to control people's behaviors, their thoughts and their emotions, and to put this thing every day I agree. in the forefront of their mind and make sure that it's that it is always on their mind and that they are actively taking actions every day to remain in obedience. Yeah, like I said, it's every time that they get dressed, every time that they change their clothes, every time that they go to the bathroom, every time, like, they're reminded of it constantly, right? If it slips out, like, they're reminded to, like, pull their shirt down or whatever. Um, I should have done that on this side because you guys can't see over there. But, yeah, I agree. It's, like, some serious, like, not only behavior control, but I feel like it also goes into the realm of thought control, like I said, with, like, the symbols on it. Um now, you might not see those every time you, like, go to the bathroom or whatever, but um, to, like, make sure that they're, like, over, you know, your breasts and your nipple and, like, all that. It's, like, or your navel, rather. Um, it's, yeah. It's a little culty. There's other stories out there. I would love it if uh, some ex-Mormon women would tell the stories of garment check. I think he does actually mean clergy. Um, not necessarily like the higher up clergy, but I think like the, like the brethren or whatever, um, from what I understand, they will like ask you about, um, like masturbation and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so I think that's who he's talking about. I'm going to back it up a couple seconds. Actions every day to remain in obedience. There's other stories out there. I would love it if, uh, some ex-Mormon women would tell the stories of garment checking, uh, this isn't an official thing from the church, but it's something. Thank you that for the follow, Yester. I'm aware a lot of women were taught to do, where when you meet a guy, uh, and you might be interested in them, you hug them in a way 
that you check to make sure they're wearing temple garments, that they're still worthy and holy and stuff. Uh, and oh my if, God. If you want to share those stories down below, that would be great. That's it for me today, covering what it is. Now you understand why. Yes, I understand the way it sounds funny. It's got, it's kind of deserved its funny reputation. It's, he's going to get a block. The, it's okay. The things, but you know, now you understand and can maybe have better conversations. Don't forget adult stuff. Get your adamandeve.com discount, 50% off one item. Some exclusions uh, apply. Use the checkout code SNOW. That's going to get you that 50% off. Link to that and the sponsor and supporting our sponsors. Seriously. Sorry. It does um, do so much for us. I'm going to go ahead and pop this out. Do, do, do. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is only going to take me a second. I learned how to do it before. See, it only takes a second. Ba bam. Bye bye. Did that remove their messages or I have to physically remove them? Oh, that's going to take longer. I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Oh, apparently they also messaged me. Well, I'm really not going to see it because uh, what do you know? You're gone. You're banned from my inbox also. Hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I, I do support Adam and Eve. I, but that does seem like a pretty good discount code if you guys are interested in it. But I am going to go ahead and remove it from the screen. Um, and thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out today. I really do appreciate it. Oh, ew. What, what was the ew? <laughs> um, I'm going to send you guys on... A raid today. Let's see who's available. Do, 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 do. Critter Vision is on, but I think I'm going to send you guys over to Soap Passion. Um, looks like they're doing some cross stitch and they do fun like soap making stuff and cool crafting. So if you guys do want to hang out on and go do a raid, um, please, please do hang out and tell them that I said hi. And I'll be over there in a minute. And I probably won't hang out for too long, though, because, um, yeah, yeah, that they're in my inbox. I probably won't hang out for too long because I did hear wifey is awake. So I want to um, want to go hang out and have coffee with her. Yes, sorry, you, you made it to just the end of the stream, Bear's Only Friend. But um, I will leave it up for people to watch, um, both here and on YouTube. So, um Please feel free to watch the rewatch and um, hit that follow button so that you get a notification every time I go live. Um, I'm going to send you guys off. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, all of y'all, it, it really means the world that you came to watch with me. So um, thank you so much. If you are going along for the raid, this is your friendly reminder to keep your arms and legs inside of the carriage at all times while the raid is in motion until it comes to a full and complete stop at your final destination.